Today we will speak about some basic concepts you already encountered in my ebook. We will start by understanding what is the definition of camera. We will talk about the sensor and how this evolved from the field. And then we will focus on focal length and how the sensor dimension can influence your result using different focal length lenses. Let's talk about the camera first. I here introduce you to the concept of camera obscura. The camera obscura is the precursor of modern cameras. The camera obscura is a dark room which can take the form of a box. You can also build a real room, but you wouldn't carry it with you all the time. Normally the light shouldn't pass through this box. That's the reason it's a dark room. The box doesn't have any aperture except for a small opening where the light is passing. This small opening is called pinhole and it is used to create an image. Now, let's ask Bob how an image can project in the camera obscura. Bob? Hello, I'm Bob. Welcome to my office. Nice to meet you. I brought for you here the camera obscura. There is magic. And you can see the inside. As you can see, light is on in my office so you can see me. The light is bouncing everywhere in the room. And from me, some of the light will go inside the box, passing from the small opening. This means that in the back of the camera obscura, my image will start to appear. It is upside down because the light is traveling in a straight line, passing through the small opening of the box and transmit the image upside down on the opposite side. This is the same method modern cameras use to capture images. Thank you, Bob. The only difference is that the camera as a film or a digital sensor on the side where the image is projected. The film or the sensor can record the image for you. Instead of an aperture, the camera, the modern camera, use lenses. A lens is a device that contains optical elements that permit the light to be controlled. And the way that the imaging that is forming in the sensor of your camera can be manipulated. With it, you can put in focus and out of focus elements of the picture, you can zoom in or zoom out the picture, you can do any of these things. Some lenses produce different results for different tastes. You have full possibilities. To differentiate what the lens is doing, there is a convention called focal length. The focal length is a number that usually is on the side of your lens printed on the bottle. It is measured in millimeters. The more this number is high, the more the lens will zoom in the picture. You can see at the bottom of page 12 of your ebook a picture that is summing up the level of magnification of your lens in this category. As you can see in the picture, a wide angle lens will include more elements of the landscape you are photographing. A telephoto will narrow the image down and you will have a great detail magnified of the scene. Before closing the lesson, I would like to point out that the focal length is influenced also by another factor, the dimension of the sensor. In fact, the measure reported on the side of your lens is referred to a full frame sensor. A full frame sensor has the same dimension of the old 35 mm films, the one we were using before digital photography was introduced. Physically, it is a rectangle-shaped surface. On this sensor, the image is impressed and processed, so it will come on the screen of your device. Because of the cost of this sensor, they invented cameras with smaller sensor that can make everything more affordable, but everything has a price. Small sensors are limiting the dimension of the picture. They will produce only a portion of the image that would have been captured by a full camera sensor. That will influence the focal length of the lens. In the reality, it's not the focal length that is changing, but it's the camera sensor that cannot impress all the image that the lens projects, because it is smaller. As a consequence, a 30mm lens on a smaller sensor is not producing the same image of a full-frame sensor but only a part of the image that will be magnified. You will have to consider this 
when you use a smaller sensor and you would need to know the difference in dimension between the small sensor and the full frame one. One of the most common small sensor is the APS-C. They are 1.5, 1.6 times smaller than a full frame sensor, depending on the brand. When you use a camera with the small sensor, to know the equivalent focal length of a full frame camera, you will have to multiply this factor to the focal length written on your lens. And lo, you will have the real focal length of your lens. This is important when you are considering to purchase a lens. Considering the fact that small sensors are getting better and better, you might also find some advantages to use them. The fact that your lens produces with a different camera body more magnified images can save you money on zoom and telephoto lenses. A good lens will in fact produce fantastic image on the APS-C sensor with good light. Please consider that small sensors are also influencing other factors. The first is the capacity to perform in a low light situation. A smaller surface also means that the sensor will catch less light. The second is that the aperture will also be influenced. The dimension of the sensor will condition all the physical elements of your lens. Very well, friend. For today, this concludes our first lesson. I'll see you tomorrow for our next discovery in photography. I will explain to you the exposure triangle that you can use to control the result of your picture. We will speak about aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And I'm always here for questions and feedback. I wish you a wonderful time. Thank you for listening to me. This is Fabio Calvelli at Standby Peaks.